Good evening, campers, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. I'm Commander Exorcist, and it's been long requested, but it's finally here. Welcome to the next installment of my exploration series in Elite Dangerous, and this is the one that's going to focus on exobiology in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. That's right. When we got the DLC a couple of years ago, it added plant life to the tenuous atmospheric worlds. And so that is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to show you how to get into a system, how to scan the bodies, determine if they have biology on them. Then I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to uh, more easily find these locations on the planet surfaces. Now, in contrast to some of my previous tutorials, um, this one's going to be a little faster. I'm not going to really go in depth as far as advanced techniques. However, I am going to assume that you know a little bit about how to fly a starship. Um, if you're going to go out and do biology and exploration like this, this tutorial assumes that you've either watched some of the previous ones or you have, you know, significant experience in exploration. You know how to handle yourself among with the, uh, the full spectrum scanner and navigate the system map, do the basic stuff. And so we're going to go through an entire sequence of entering into a star system doing the FSS scan, doing an approach, and then a couple of ways that I have found that are um, pretty effective in searching a planet surface, finding the POIs that you need to scan, and then what you can do when you're down on the surface to get the most scans in the least amount of time. Because depending on what you're scanning, there are different ways um, that you can go about finding these locations, scanning them, and moving on. So that is what we're going to talk about here and let's get started. Now the system that I'm using in this tutorial has already been discovered but it's good to hit it with the FSS as well to get the credits for exploration, exploration. plus it'll give you an opportunity to see where it is we're going. When you're scanning a planet with the FSS and it has biology on it, it will pop up in the far right corner just like it does uh, with geology and other persistent POIs. Now, um, let's see here. This is the, there's a ringed gas giant here. Yep, and then the, the planet that we're actually looking at in this system is the first moon, and it should be this one right here. Yep, and so you can see it has four biologic signals. Now, there's no way in game without going to the planet to know what those are, but we do have our target, so we know that it is a carbon dioxide atmosphere and it has four biologics, and that is going to be our primary target uh, for this tutorial. Now, obviously, the next thing that you want to do is jump into Super Cruise and fly out to your location of choice. In this particular instance, we are approaching our carbon dioxide tenuous atmosphere world, and uh, it is a four probe planet, but uh, you're going to notice that I'm shooting a couple more than that, and I because I really don't care about the uh, the payout for efficiency because any payout that we get for scanning the biologics on this world are going to eclipse anything that we would have earned as far as an efficiency bonus. So um, that's kind of a mindset change, especially for me when it comes to exploration, because um, now you can see that the planet is lit up different shades of blue, and it changes as we move our filters based on the different type of biologic signal. And this is a point where I want to show you something that is uh, kind of unique, something that I have uh, been doing on my own exploration, and it has made things so much easier when trying to find a, a diverse set of biologic signals over an entire planet surface. Now, what I'm doing is just kind of quickly flipping through the different POI filters. And what I'm looking for is areas on the planet surface that stay illuminated as I'm changing filters. And that's one of the reasons that I do it fast. Um, it's You're kind of looking at the planet from a whole perspective, and you're looking for areas that um, mostly stay illuminated. They may change different colors or, or change to a different shade, but you want to find something like this area right here. See this as I flip through the different filters. It stays illuminated. That should be your first target. And there are a couple of other places on the planet's surface that do the same thing. Um, the shades may change, the patterns may change, but they typically stay 
illuminated. And what that means is that there is the potential for a high concentration of all four POI signals in that region. So instead of having to fly to one section of the planet, scan, and then fly up to another, you can find these POI locations where uh, the, the biology is kind of huddled together. And it makes it so much easier for scanning, cataloging, and then allowing you to move on to your next target. So that's exactly what I'm looking for here. And you can see there's another section that as we're filtering through, there are areas there. And it's not a guarantee, but it is a high probability that I'll be able to find all four biologic POIs at one of these locations that's staying illuminated with the filter change. So as you can see, we've identified a location to land right there where the reticle is. You can see that area. And I like to double check while I'm on approach, um, even right down to the last second, just to make sure that I'm hitting you know, my preferred area. So we're going to fly in here, and I'm going to cut out some of the approach. And so we are exiting Glide, and we have entered into the atmosphere and approaching the planet surface. This should be pretty familiar to most people at this point, but the thing we want to look at now is um, we're looking for the biologics. So what I've learned is that if you have a small, fast, and nimble ship, it is better to just fly around and not get out of your ship and use your SRV at all if you can help it. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, as you can see, I'm going to show you a couple of different things here. Um, I've never visited this planet before. This is my first time here, but I can already tell that we did all right because you can see there are the cactus tuber things. And then look here, you can see uh, the bacteria. And bacterium, along with uh, Frutexia, can be some of the most difficult stuff to find on these planet surface. Bacterium, especially because it's a 2D model and it's flat against the ground, you basically have to be right on top of it if you're in an SRV. But what I want to show you here is that we've already located one spot of bacterium. So I'm going to show you how um, I do my scanning. So I know that in my dolphin, my commander disembarks on the right side. So I'm going to put my dolphin down right here and I'm going to disembark and if I got it right I should be right over top of my biologic target and let's see yep we are right over it so I don't even have to leave the disembarking area all I gotta do is pull out my uh, scanner scan the sample we're done and I'm gonna board my ship and that first sample is done so we're going to start the engines back up here and we're going to fly over the planet surface and find our next piece of bacteria and that my friends is all there is to it and this is much easier than say using a um an srv because as you can see there was a piece of bacteria but it's not far enough away for the um genetic diversity that we need so we have to move a little bit further away but no big deal there's another one so we're gonna set down here and I'm just gonna plop my dolphin down disembark one more time and if I did it right there we go two for two don't even have to step out of the uh, of the area just pull out my scanner and there is sample number two and as you can see as we're flying around um, it's obvious that we did okay with the biologic selections in this region there is looks like frutexia and then you've got the cactus tubers that are lining the surface as well so we're going to fly over here and yep there is our should be our final bacteria piece I'm gonna touch down here and in what amounts to probably 90 to 120 seconds of flight time, if even that, I still don't even have to step out of the, of the disembarking area. Scan it. There's my third sample. And we've earned some credits. So, And that's it. And so if you can get a small ship, fly around, land at each one of the biologic POIs, 
you can be done in no time. Like this planet with four POIs, and if we found all four of them in this little bitty area, we'll be done in no time. Be able to scan this planet, catalog it, get our credit payout, and move on. So uh, I want to show you what I was talking about. So we found bacteria. There are the cactus tubers. Really cool. And if we fly around here, there is tussock. So they're right there in one little area is three out of the four biologics that we need. Now, I know that the fourth POI on this planet is Frutexia. And let's talk about different types of biology and where they can be located. Now, it took me a few minutes to fly across the area, but we have found Frutexia. And this is a perfect example of one of the challenges with biologics is they do grow in different areas of the planet and it really is reliant on the altitude and the surface composition and so Frutexia in particular along with Fungoidia d tends to grow in higher elevations so if you're looking at an area and you're not having trouble finding that particular biologic um, look in some of the higher elevations or in contrast um, concha tends to grow in lower elevations, so check for valleys and canyons and stuff like that. So, um, and if you have any trouble or you're looking for specifics, check out the Elite Dangerous, Dangerous Wiki because there's very specific information about each type of biologic, where they grow, and kind of some key indicators that can help you find them on planet surfaces. There's far too much information to go into in a tutorial video like this, but I highly recommend that you check out the wiki that will give you more information about each biologic and help you find them. Now, one final thing before we go, I do want to put a plug in for a very, very valuable tool that I use every time that I work with biology in this game, and it is called ED Observatory. And there is a Bio Insights plugin. I will include a link in the description to the ED Observatory software and a separate link for the Bio Insights plugin. Now, what it does is it reads your Elite Dangerous journal entries. And as you scan the planet, it provides a variety of important information. And the reason that I'm gone back and I'm showing you the scanning of the planet when we first arrived is I want to show you what came up in ED Observatory when I scanned this planet. Now the observatory software was blank until I launched the probes and a complete scan of the planet was done and this is the information I was given. Now what you can see on the screen is a pretty clear indication that this is a very valuable world to scan. Between 15 million to 22 million credits for scanning these different biologics. This tool is amazing and I really cannot stress enough that if you're going to do biologic scanning in Elite, this is a must-have utility. Yes, ED Discovery and other tools are great, but this is the tool to have because it has a few other functions and I just want to show you real quick some of the some of the ones that really stick out to me that make um, scanning and exploration for biologics very easy. Now, in the interest of disclosure, I do want to acknowledge that the pop-up that's about to appear once this is scanned is not accurate. It's because I'm just doing an overlay to show you what comes up. But when you scan a biologic, you receive information about the payout and the distance that you need to travel to collect the next sample. And that makes it so much easier when you're scouting on these worlds and you're not sure if you need to go 150 meters or in this case, for if we were doing the tubus, it would be 800 meters. So once you've returned to the skies, uh, the pop-up will disappear. You fly a little bit and then you get a second pop-up that tells you that you've reached your minimum distance. So I know that any of the biologics that match what I'm looking for in this area are okay for me to land and scan. And again, I know that we're not scanning tubas. The information on the screen is wrong, but it's really just up there as an example to show you what pops up while you're flying. This is an indispensable tool. It's really vital, in my opinion, um, to making your um, exploration journey as far as biologics so much easier and so much more profitable.
And the final piece with the ED Observatory is as you're scanning, you get sample notifications and updates so I can look and see that I have scanned three bacterium, so I got one million credits for that, and I've got one tussock, which is worth four million, so I need two other tussocks to complete the set, and uh, it looks like the Frutexia and the Tubus are about the same as far as payout, so that's pretty good, um, but that is an awesome tracker to help you um, during your exploration journey. And that's going to be it for this one. I tried my best to keep it short and sweet, but there's so much information to share about exploration in this game that it's just really difficult to get it all down to smaller chunks. However, I got one thing, or actually two things I want to talk about real quick before we go, is make sure that when you're out here scanning biologics that you bring the Artemis suit because it is the one with the genetic sampler that you need to scan the flowers. So thanks for hanging out with me. Hey, if you have tips and tricks, things to make uh, your exploration a little bit easier, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Commander Exorcist. Take care, fly safe, and I will see you out there. Good night, everybody.